Sui. Meanwhile, Logan's right about to join me. Hello, Logan. Yo. How's it going? Hey. I had to turn off your stream. I wasn't sure what was talking and what was real. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. Um, we just watched Aditya, or, yeah, Aditya get sort of wrecked 3 0 by Spiteful Priest. I only caught the yeah. I only caught the end there. I was I was busy playing Rocket League. I thought they were starting at eight thirty, and then I, I log on and we're on game three and two zero. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um, I don't even remember what happened in game one. Spiteful priest and spiteful things. Game two was a mirror where Sweep dropped down to four HP, but managed to clear a board, get a mind control off archivist, and I think that was like a one in three mind control too to uh, mm. prevent lethal, <laughs> and then just never lost the board after that. And yeah, game 3 the, was sort of brutal. Yeah, the Hunter game didn't look too close. Um, let me look through their decks really quick. I think Sweeb's bringing some pretty meta ladder decks. He usually just brings, you know, solid choices. Um, yep. so this I is love... Actually I was gonna say, I just love the Dead Man's Hands from Aaron, though. I was watching Dog play that earlier. Yeah, no, it's definitely my favorite deck to watch in this tournament. So I was gonna say, part of me wants Aaron to win because, damn it, he's playing Dead Man's Hand Warrior, and I love that deck. But the other half of me realizes that I'm playing the winner of this series, and oh god, I do not want to play against Aaron's decks. Because Sweep's playing ladder stuff, like, I know how to beat ladder things. They're annoying, <laughs> they can high row, but they're the evil I know. Dead Man's Hand Warrior is the evil I don't. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, come on. I don't know about you, but at least 50% of my ladder these days is Dead Man's Head Warrior or um, Tech Druid. Yeah, yeah, So, I, I actually mentioned this when I was planning this tournament from the start, where after I saw Decklist, the two I was most scared of were you and Aaron, because you were playing decks that I have no idea how to play against. I'll be honest, um, the day I chose my Decklist, I had no games on any of those besides Exodia Mage. <laughs> And, and I just found the deck list on uh, HS Replay, and I was like, you know what, that looks really fun. I bet I could do well with that. Nice. Yep, and uh, I mean, you have been doing exactly that really, really well with your decks. I'm, I'm surprised at how well it worked out, but I took like the Control Priest on ladder, and I got like 50 games in it, and I, I was like really comfortable with it. And it, it surprisingly works. I, I can safely say that I have zero... Well, no, I now have three games played against your, your tech <laughs> druid. I have zero games played against any of your other decks, though. That's that's the secret up my sleeve. I mean, then again, you've technically not played against any of my decks. It's just, turns out, off-meta aggro decks play like slightly weaker versions of on-meta aggro decks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually curious, um, I was a little sad that this was last hero standing because I wanted to try to bring out some of these crazy decks. Um, right. I, wanted, I wanted everyone to face the control priest and, and see what fear that can bring into you. Yep. Of course, the advantage of last hero standing is that if one of your meme decks turns out to be terrible, you won't just get <laughs> totally eaten because you have to win with that deck in Conquest. That's true, yeah. However, however... All of my meme decks can just hardcore target Warlock and then just cross my fingers that everyone brings Warlock. So I think in this tournament there are like two control Warlocks, three or four Zoos, and like... Not yeah, that, that surprised me a lot. <laughs> not what I was expecting. There's also like less pal... I mean, there are Paladins everywhere, but there's still less Paladins than I thought there would be. I teched in four Hungry Crabs, I haven't met <laughs> a single Murloc deck. Yeah, I, I figured everyone would bring Warlock. And, and specifically, I thought everyone would bring Cuber Control, and I thought everyone would bring Dude or Murloc Paladin. Yep. And then it just didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so my game plan was ban Warlock and beat Paladin. I have been <laughs> both banning Warlock and beating Paladin, and it's been going great for me up until I found players who don't play either Warlock or Paladin. <clears throat> Logan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so looking through Suhib's lists right now, uh, which one do you think, uh, which one do you think Aaron wants to ban? Let's see, so he has Jade Druid, Spiteful, Priest, Dude, Paladin, and, uh, some really interesting control mage here. So historically we've seen Aaron ban a lot of tempo mages, we've seen him ban Zulocks. Um, he's very confident, oh wait no, that's not Dude Paladin, sorry, that's Murloc Paladin. Yeah, yeah. 
we we see he's quite confident in his ability to beat Paladin. He's very confident in his ability to beat uh beat Jade Druid with that man's hand. So And I feel like this priest deck can't beat Dead Man's Hand either. I think we might see him ban this Spiteful Priest just because it has the highest potential to high roll, um, snowball out of control and crush him. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I think he's not worried about the mage deck at all because Dead Man Hand should roll over that, I would think, because he's just right. gonna mill all his important cards. Yeah, and... like, there's not enough burn in that mage to really pose a big threat. Yeah. Cindergosa adds a bit more value for the control game, but even there, you've got to have just some crazy pulls for that to be good. Like, yeah, Deathwing Dragonlord off one, which pulls Deathwing Deathwing from the other one. That'd be a nice one. But then, going on the other side, I don't know how they're going to decide who bans first. Um, if Suib decides to ban the Dead Man's Hound Warrior, that really changes Eren's game plan. Eren does also have the Kingsbane Rogue, which I believe um, might have pretty good matchups against most of these control decks too. That's true. I did much earlier, back in the group stages, watch him crush Trung Lee three games in a row with Kingsbane, so there's definitely potential there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> it's funny, but the Kingsbane Ro Rogue was the deck that I was most afraid of since I brought so much control. Um, because I can't fatigue against that ever, whereas even Dead Man's Hand, I can do some shenanigans and just steal this deck. Right. On Kingsbane, you could potentially steal Kingsbane? I can steal a 1-3 weapon, which won't cut it, though. <laughs> That's true. Now when his version is like 10-3, or 16-3. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, he is also running Combo Dragon Priest, which we've seen win a lot of games for him, and seems to be his preferred leading deck in these series. And then Control Cube Warlock, which, I mean, it's a cube lock. We've seen it all. We've seen it on ladder. His only on meta deck. Oh, mm -hmm. I guess the combo, combo Dragons is also infesting top of ladder. Yeah, they're, they're becoming more and more uh, prevalent. Yep. Yeah, so that's also my other worry if I have to play against Aaron. I have to ban Control Warlock because I dropped Spellbreaker from all of my decks to make my non-Warlock matchups better, thinking I was going to ban it every game. Mm -hmm. Which means I have to get through Dead Man's Hand. Okay, um, we're trying to figure out how to flip a coin in chat here. How does oh, that work? Uh, <laughs> Is it at coin flip? This bot's too realistic. You have to uh, you have to flip it <laughs> before you call it. All right. It, it looks like I am a coin flipping maestro. Sweep claws heads. It's tails, and that means sweep gets first ban. Interesting strategy by Sweep. They're calling heads. He called head versus me as well and lost. So um, it's not a, it's not a good strategy for him. I think he should consider you know what the meta is in coin flipping these days. And we all know that being good at coin flipping means being good at Hearthstone. <laughs> I, I was going to say, this may be too realistic for the for the match at hand. <laughs> Aaron chooses to ban second, very appropriately. Which, yeah, ma makes sense. It doesn't really make sense to ban first. <laughs> Unless you're feeling super confident. Sui bans Warlock, and I think we're going to see a very, very easy Priest ban here from Aaron. Yeah, I agree. Um... <laughs> Wait, Zoo, oh. <laughs> Zoo mentions the yeah. Zoo Warlock because Aaron has troll names for all his decks. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, Aaron definitely doesn't care about Jade Druid, doesn't care about this mage deck. Uh, there's the Paladin and there's the Priest that can both be potential threats. But yeah, given, given his lineup here, um, well, I don't know. Like, Is there a reason? Because that is Murloc, so it is the more aggressive variant. I wonder how afraid of that he is. Um, so I've talked to him about this exact subject before. Murloc Paladin is better against Dead Man's Hand than Dude Paladin is. But even given that, I think the Priest still has a higher chance to high roll the, pa uh, high roll the Warrior than the Paladin does. And I'm saying this as a, a self-proclaimed Murloc Paladin maestro. 
Yeah, I, th I find that really interesting, I guess. I would just... I guess it makes more sense you have more whirl whirlwinds than you do executes in your deck. Yep. Alright, so looks like Aaron's still deciding here. Of course, as a Murloc Paladin player, I'm also of the opinion that Murloc Paladin loses to everything in this game. It's horribly unfair, so you might want to take my opinion with a grain of salt. That's true, it can't even beat Zola Druid. <laughs> I mean, that, that was the dirtiest Zola I've ever <laughs> seen. It was... yeah, that was... <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I'm really sad that I didn't get my audio for it because I was hoping that I could uh, edit together our commentary so we could see what we're saying about each other. Yep. It's too bad because your commentary was probably pretty interesting, whereas I was just being really salty. I I started out I was I was like discussing my plays, like why I was doing certain things, and then we get to the ending, and I'm just like, uh. This looks like a lot of this looks like a lot of damage. I'm just gonna hit it at the face now. Yep. I mean in general, if your entire mindset is let's play more taunts, you probably have the correct <laughs> way to beat me. That's and true. Aaron Which, does we're... ban the priest. We're good at this. Okay. Uh, so we should see them in game soon. Well, hopefully, yep. And in the meantime, let me adjust the overlay to reflect the bands. As usual, I'm doing low production quality stream because I am lazy. And that is a it, priest ban and a warlock ban. It's funny, you uh, you switched to using uh, just like, you know, the one to two letter, you know, acronyms, I guess, for the each class. And you had H down, and I actually forgot <laughs> what class that was. I haven't seen a hunter in so long. Hey, you saw a hunter yesterday. <laughs> I did, yeah. And that was that's the first time, actually, when I saw the H before, before whoever that was started playing it. I was like, what is H? Like, what class starts with H? <laughs> I mean, there's been an alright representation of spell hunter on ladder. It's not that extinct. It's not like that's... warrior. That's true. Well, although, I generally try to play those terrible decks, so I guess I would be more surprised by Shaman. I mean, you play terrible control decks, and then aggro Shaman and wild. Yeah, the, my, my wild aggro Shaman, that was just, you know, I was like, huh, this deck is really good, I, sh I should just play it more. Makes sense. Al although, interestingly, um, VS Data Reaper Report came out with their wild rankings, like, two weeks later than that or something, and put Aggro Shaman in Tier 3. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think maybe I... they need to be reminded of just how it feels to get Lava Burst to face. <laughs> I think it just shows more that playing decks that you're comfortable with is way better than just choosing top meta decks. Um, like I said before, I'm just I'm just way better at this game when I choose Mimi decks that I've played you know, for 50 games rather than just going to HS Replay and choosing the top meta deck. I mean, that also makes sense, playing Mimi decks you've played 50 games with, and I think the top of this tournament so far sort of reflects that. We got you, me, and Aaron all playing Comfort decks, and then... Although there is Sui, which is the HS Replay or uh, Vicious Syndicate <laughs> representative. Although, I think Sui just plays that a lot on ladder, so so that it is reflective of his comfort picks as well. That could also be true. I mean, I also have the issue where I say I'm playing comfort decks, but I'm playing Paladin, which is a comfort deck, and then um, I haven't played a single game with either of my any of my three other decks on ladder. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is sort of why I came into this tournament expecting to drop out really early, but people keep banning Zoo. Yeah, what did what did I ban against you? You banned Zoo. That's what I thought. Yeah. And I three old me, so you know, who am I to talk? <laughs> well, the the Zoo looks scary to me. I just I expected more control from everyone, and I thought I'd be able to ban like one, <laughs> you know, like one deck there, yep. one of aggro deck, and then you come out with four aggro decks, and I just yeah. It was so between that and Murlocs. Funnily enough, I haven't played Zoo a single time this entire tournament. It got banned in all three matches <laughs> during groups because I was pretending it was Q block. <laughs> Even though anyone who actually knew me would have known that there's zero chance that was the case. And then, um, alright, looks like they're in game actually. Let me quickly. Right. 
spectate. But yeah, and then um, it got banned twice in twice in the actual bracket stage too. I haven't had a single chance to play it. I was gonna say this this tournament could also be interesting. I do like the idea of open deck lists for the finals, but what if it was just um, you had to declare your classes but didn't give out the um, the exact details? Right. I think. The that would have really benefit those benefited those of us who are bringing weird off meta decks. Mm. The the one big issue with that though is potentially you can bring Zoo Warlock and you know Control Warlock and then decide which one is better. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to do that in previous metas during group stages back when I had multiple decks for classes, but nowadays the only so I have like six Paladin decks and like half a deck for everything else. Anyways, Murloc Paladin, really strong opener. Um, there's always a question of whether you play Chum first or Tide Caller first. Obviously, if you play Tide Caller first, you get extra, you get one extra total stat because the Chum can buff the Inquisitor. But if you play Chum first, it can hit the Tide Caller, which is your most valuable Murloc. So there's there's some uh, some argument there. Goes with the Chum. I can't disagree yeah. with it. I've done both at various points, and it does hit the Tide Caller. I was gonna say, I, I guarantee Suib has more experience with this deck than I would, but given this curve, um, I yep. think it's hard to make a bad decision here. <laughs> yep, this is. It's not exactly the dream opener, because the dream opener is turn one tide color, turn two rock pool, but this is pretty much the next best thing. Acolyte of Pain is gonna come down and get promptly ignored as the war. Oh, the war leader might use the uh, Inquisitor, or might cause the Inquisitor to kill the Acolyte. There's going to be more cards for Divine Favor later on. I, I think you go ahead and kill it just yep. for fear of execute. And then 10 damage going face already. So this is pretty much my game plan against Aaron too if he advances. Just hope that I curve out like crazy. This is looking really bad. I mean, even if you make it to turn 6, you've got like a Terran reload then. <laughs> yep. Ooh, oh, and, uh, off note, Bluegill Warrior in this Paladin deck. I need to bring up the correct deck list on stream. Uh, I didn't notice that when I was first looking at this deck, but that is Bluegill Warrior. This He's is running this two. 22 damage already. Yep. Um, I, I think we see everything going face here. Yep. I, I would agree. I mean, you, you can take the execute at this point. The only out here... So well, you blood, can't even, you can't even brawl. Blood Razor is actually going to be really strong here. Like, I, if you look at this deck list, it might be worth um, trading the three two into the armor. He doesn't. Can't fault him. Um, Blood Razor. No, he's still dead even with Blood Razor. He needs. No, Blood Razor leaves him dead. He needs bring it on execute. No, I think he's just dead. Um. Um. So bring it on I... execute. Let's him take. I think whirl whirlwind sleep was like the only thing he could have had here. Yeah, bring it on execute. I think barely keeps him alive. It puts him at fourteen health versus two plus six plus one plus two plus one, which. 8, okay. 10, 12, it's the 2 off Tarim. lethal, Tarim. 1 no, off Tarim, lethal, oh, <laughs> uh, it's not Tarim, yeah, he's actually 1 off lethal, yeah, um, he needs to get 2 murlocs from Call to Arms for it to be lethal, no, no, Tarim, oh, wait, Tarim is 4 mana from Bring It On, yeah. oops, <laughs> wait, Order, oh, he has yeah, lethal um, anyways, he has lethal anyways, okay. but, Order, oh, that was brutal, yeah, I, and I think that's, Possibly bad by Aaron to lead with the dead man's because I think Sui would expect that and then losing the dead man's is That was like your main thing against uh, like these Jade Druid and Handlock mage. Yep. On the other hand, none of his decks have really good matchups against this paladin Other than dead man's so I can sort of see it Aaron mentioning that he almost banned the paladin so that does put Sweep up 1-0 and taking out Aaron's most comfortable deck, so that has got to feel good as an opener. I think uh, Aaron might come out with this Inner Fire Priest next. Yeah, I, I feel like Kingsbane Rogue is just really brutal. Like, it's really, really bad against this yeah. Paladin deck, so 
It almost has to be Priest. I think I was looking up the stats for my normal Ladder Paladin on HS Replay, and that's like 72% win rate against Rogue. <laughs> I, I would believe it. I mean, he's, he's running a single Doomsayer, which you would probably have to play on Curve. Yep. And, and then where do you go from there? Do you start sapping, you know, <laughs> Tide Callers? Right. Does he have Vanish in this deck? He does. He runs double Vanish. Yeah, so from my experience on the other side of that matchup, like huge Vanish turns and then getting a Lifesteal King's... A huge double Vanish delaying just long enough to get a massive Lifesteal King's Bane is like the only way they win there. He does go with the Priest. Yep, makes a ton of sense. Cannot fold him for that at all. And he gets a bunch of combo crap in his opening hand, which he's probably going to want to mill. This is, yeah, uh, I was going to say, probably just looking for potion. Yep. This is a lovely, lovely opener for the Paladin. Um, Sacred Maw, as usual, is a troll, but... <laughs> Actually, this is no, not as great anymore, because Earthshark Cleric turn 1 always feels really awkward to play against. You yeah. wonder whether or not he's going to go for, like... I don't know. Nothing feels great. Val um, probably Valfin is the best, because turn 2 you can coin the War Leader and clear off the Earthshire. But even that is not fantastic, and we're probably going to see Parward Shield on the other side. Um, I was going to say, like, yeah, Parward Shield still feels better here. Yeah, like, there's an option to draw a card with Hero Power, but Parward Shield gets you out of range of Coin War Leader. Obviously, we know uh, what Aaron <laughs> doesn't, which is that War Leader is in fact in hand, but he goes for Parward Shield. And I was gonna fire. say, like that is beautiful. This is this is a matchup where you don't necessarily need your combo as long as you can just keep the board clear. Yep. Uh, one important thing of note is, like me, Sweep is not running Spellbreaker in this, so I'm guessing he too is um, planning on banning every Warlock in sight. It's just while I teched in two Consecrations to help with the aggro matchups, he teched in two Blue Gale Warriors to go face harder. <laughs> that I like that plan a lot. Yeah, I should have thought about that. I you see, I got bit in the rear by my own consecration yesterday when I got pulled from a Draconet operative. Job's done. Yeah, um, it's similar to how always in priest decks where I consider, like, uh, hey, oh, this is a really good play. Ooh, nice. <laughs> he 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 finds he plays around noble sack. So it's a little risky because getaway Kodo is also a pretty good play or a reasonable play there. But it is, in fact, Noble Sack, and now Aaron looks like a genius. He also pulls draw Duskbreaker. Last. Yeah, draw last. He also pulls Duskbreaker, which is super huge in this matchup as the only AoE in this deck. Yeah, I think he would probably even consider holding onto this Twilight Drake just to keep that option open. Yeah, you have to leave the Duskbreaker activator. The question now is whether or not you drop this Duskbreaker or. Nah, you don't bother. You just attack yeah. and heal. Yeah, still not too worried. Just keep drawing. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Fine by me. A uh, mass dispel can also be really big here because it can it can sort of take down massive tarim turns or like uh, big I've, mega sword uh, boards. I was gonna say, given that hand, I guarantee Sweeb's about to do Grimscale into Murloc, and then yep. that's gonna get hard punished. Yep, that is absolutely happening in right now. Now, we'll see whether or not he trades the, the chum in. I think he does. Yeah. So that makes it slightly less terrible. And another inner fire. Now, I think you're perfectly fine with great. just the master spell, yeah. Um, you do you do lose the Northshire after Master Spell, but wait, oh oh after okay, hmm yeah. So he's gonna heal first, makes sense. That means he isn't gonna Master Spell. Shadow Visions for Harbored Shield. Okay, that's true. Yeah, he doesn't actually even nope, need. And now to... he's not even gonna lose the Northshire. Yeah. He's better than us. Um, However, now he is going to lose the Rushire. Um, I, I would like to see Rockpool Hunter Divine Favor here. Absolutely, this this feels good. Draw 5, come on. 
the, the order doesn't matter because there's no way you don't trade here. Yeah. Oh, draw five. Come on. And call now, arms. All, all of a sudden, this is quite a different game again. Yep, Tarim comes in, strongest card in his, or second strongest card in his deck. And the second Divine Favor means you don't even feel bad about just chucking all the Murlocs down and getting them Dusk Broke. <laughs> uh, notably, though, he didn't find either Call to Arms. Yep, that is big. Call to Arms is so good as a recovery after Duskbreaker. Heart Creeper Talon Priest. Um, Aaron's feeling comfortable just poking up, and that Heart Creeper is going to be a big wall. But. Oh, that's interesting. You, you don't really feel good taraming here, but it does let you get through the Tar Creeper, and you know now that I think that's both Divine Favor. Or, yeah, that's both Divine's. Wait, no. No. No, it isn't. I believe that's neither, actually. I no, think two, they were both from Sh Shadow Visions. Yeah, you're right. You, you are absolutely right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eren gets another Dustbreaker from Nether Spite, and now the Dustbreakers and the Dragon Operative can all trigger each other, like a big happy dragon family. He's got Megasaur, so he can start vomiting out his hand. Especially, oh, I didn't even see the Call to Arms. Yeah, um, call, call to Arms into Cold Light Seer can be really strong. I would also be fine with just playing three Murlocs. And a secret. Hmm. And it looks like he is going to go for the three Murlocs in a secret route. Uh, Getaway Kodo is pretty incredible here to give you another potential Tarim. <laughs> Actually, like, but there is there's, there's merits to almost all of those. Yeah, like, I pick Repentance a lot. I think it's really underrated as a secret in matchups like these. But Getaway Kodo is the choice, and it's hard to fault him for it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Master spell. Master spell is pretty good here. Test for noble sack first. Pops the master spell, and now he's gonna kill whatever he. Uh, now he's just gonna dust breaker and clear everything. So. Place oh, the okay. Okay. One. Not a fan of that. The first minion played was the one two. Wait, no, it's the tarim. Never mind. Yeah, it was the tarim. So. Doesn't play around getaway Kodo necessarily. I, um, I think here you can do uh, Call to Arms and a Megasaur. Yeah, Call to Arms Megasaur is pretty good here. It's probably the best play, or the only play even. <laughs> nice. Uh, terrible placement and of the Knife Juggler there. The Charger comes, uh, comes in pretty big here. I think plus three attack is a no-brainer. Yeah, seems like it. And so one thing, really, really, that's, I'm not sure I understand poisonous at all. Plus three attack does everything poisonous does, but more. What? And now the poisonous rock pool is gonna, oh uh, no. I feel like that has yeah. to be a misplay. I, I was thinking like maybe you're worried of some crazy divine spirit turn, but yeah, even then I think the, the higher attack would have been better. Yeah, you, you play to your outs when you're behind this paladin. Poisonous is totally not it. The light dim. Um, one thing I didn't comment on earlier is that uh, Aaron played his Discovered Duskbreaker rather than the one he's had in his hand since like the start of the game, which gives a little more information out than you probably should. Yeah. Um. Tidecaller, Hero Power, Megasaur. At this point, the Paladin is running out of steam. It's going to be very hard for him to win from here. His second call to arms is going to pull like barely anything, and a poisonous again. <laughs> well, I, I missed the options there. What? Yeah, what were all me the too. I, I'm not sure there are any better options than poisonous here this time, but even so. Um, I think he might be fine trading in the Dustbreaker and then playing the second Dustbreaker. I thought about that, but I think he's content just trading with the board he has, developing another minion. Oh yeah, that that makes even more sense. Well, I think I sort of would have liked to see the Draconid Operative instead of the Twilight Drake. Twilight Drake's not really a real minion here, and I would rather I mean, just hold it as a Dragon Activator for the rest of his stuff. Yeah, you didn't even have to play the heal there, you could have played the Draconid. 
Yeah, Cause exactly. Because he healed that turn. I mean, what's what are you going to do against a 5-1? Both night jugglers have been seen already. Yeah, Paladin has no way of dealing with it. Instead, we have another um, sort of mid turn. Looks like the second Tarim's going to come out. Okay. Well, I mean, if you're making this play as the Paladin player, you feel so bad about it. Yeah, I think he's hoping for more Divine Favor value. I might have just played it there for three cards just to find anything, really. Alchemist is a nice option here to trade. And these play the Operative now. Please play the Operative? I, it's so I almost, good. It's I almost so think good. now he wants to hold the Operative just in case he sees... Uh, second call to arms that he has yeah. a dust breaker available. Makes sense, like the only thing he can lose to at this point. But I really would have liked to see the operative and stuff to fly like Drake earlier. I, yeah, I agree with that. And oh, that is that. the second call to arms. Call to arms, divine favor. Let's go. He's gonna be left with uh, one card in his deck after this. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not sure he has anything to do here. Divine shield isn't Honestly, yeah. that great. <laughs> I think he played a war leader and just push, push, push. And I think that will give that, that, Aaron the game with a Duskbreaker. Yeah, oh, trading! What? I, I mean, at this point, you go face and pray. Like, you have a Leroy left in your deck, it's the last card in the deck. Oh, he's the purifier as well. Is about to get some, uh, get some value. Play the, play the operative, dude. It's just a big body. You know there's, that there's literally one card left. So if you don't yeah. play it now, <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna see Leroy purifier, uh, Leroy hero power purifier mall is the only viable play here. So there could possibly be a world in which this Leroy could do some damage, if not for the Twilight Acolyte, the Inner Fire, um, yeah. you know, priest things in general. Yeah, no. It's, this is, uh, I think this game is impossible to win at this point, unless Aaron, like, falls asleep. <laughs> well played. And the offensive well played. Well Brutal. <laughs> Let's see, which option will he choose? I wonder if Aaron doesn't know what that last card is and is just worried it's you know something he forgot about, like Blessing of Kings or something. It's possible. He might in fact with that break he might have just been consulting deck lists and making sure that there's nothing he needs to play around. You wish to live forever. But, uh, there is no Blessing of Kings here. <laughs> Only sadness. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna mark this one as over and the series <laughs> equalized at one apiece. Sweep can push, um... 6 damage? In return for 14. <laughs> yep. uh, and Aaron has lethal here, actually. Oh wait, no, there's a righteous protector. I think he still has lethal. I'm not. I don't know. It's it's close. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, that that that's a misplay. Aaron had lethal, and he missed it there. <laughs> it still doesn't matter. <laughs> Never punished. <laughs> yep. Aaron is really good at getting himself dominating positions and really bad at spotting lethals. I think I watched him miss lethal three times in a row um, in the groups, but he was in such a dominating position in all those games that it didn't I, matter. I, I think, you know, given from what we know about him loving Dead Man's Hand Warrior, he just enjoys the war of attrition and watching his opponents just starve to death. That makes sense. So do you think we're going to see the Jade Druid come out, or do you think we're going to see the weird control mage? Um, let's see. Against Spiteful... I, I would be worried if I were Suheeb that I would be giving Aaron too much time to it's, it's get the combo. Spiteful. It's combo. 
Well, uh, okay. <laughs> the, deck, <laughs> the deck known as Spiteful. <laughs> I, I'd be worried, though, if I brought out the mage, that I might be giving Aaron too much time to assemble a combo. Right. But even with Jade Druid, I think you have to be a little worried. So one of the big things we see is that the Jade Druid isn't running the taunt package, which is uh, the Oaken Summons and the 3-6 thing that I never learned the name of, because I just kill it. Uh, uh, I, you know, I just think of that as Oaken Summons. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he does end up queuing up with the mage. Like the worry with the Jade Druid is that if you can't put taunts in front of, uh, in front of the priest, the priest can totally just OTK you. That's true. And we see a pretty good opening hand from Aaron. I wonder if he's thinking of throwing away the alchemist, and he does. And Although... on Sweep's side, this looks like a tempo mage opener. I was, I was gonna say that looks pretty dirty for a control mage. Although a babbling book is too slow to see play a tempo mages nowadays. Is he gonna coin Frostbolt? Oh my, that no. feels so bad with Mana Worm in hand. Oh, oh you hate to see that. I, I, I don't like that at all. I mean, are you really afraid of taking one face damage? I, I really don't like that at all. But... Oh, got the standard uh, turn 2 hero power for no reason pass from Priest. <laughs> It's a very traditional priest play. And we see discover or get random spell last, lol. Yeah, I think that was a misplay actually by Aaron. Um, he is playing Anduin, so you're supposed to heal the opponent's face and right, threat. Light shall burn you. Um, on the other side, there's not much to play here. I think you drop a 3 4 talent priest, spider tank. He's gonna preemptively silence the mana worm. I think I can get on board with that. The, the one thing I'm a little worried about here is, like, yes, this looks like a tempo mage list right now. But, like, I'm actually looking at the list worried that I had the wrong person up, but, nope. but like, you might want to save some of this for, you know, like, Syndragosa, or... I mean, he has Mass Dispel for Syndragosa. Oh, yeah, that's even better. And, yeah, I mean, as the priest, you just want to stick a minion long enough to get combo and win the game. In any case, this board from uh, from Sweep is sort of non-threatening, even with the early mana worms. Double power word shield. It's gonna come clear out the remaining buffed uh, mana worm. Chooses to save a power word shield. I guess he's playing around polymorph. Oh uh, yeah, polymorph or any other number of random stuff that can come out. <laughs> One thing we haven't mentioned yet is that Simulacrum came out of uh, Primordial Glyph for Sweep here. This could duplicate something really high value like a Syndragosa later on, or at least a Trailblazer, and that oh, could yeah. be something interesting. Also, yeah, I'm really excited. I was gonna say, I'm really excited to see the at least the Trailblazer in Sweep's deck. I tried to fit that into my Control Priest, but I didn't really find anything to cut for it. Makes sense. Plays a secret, explosive runes is the only secret. Oh wait, no, there's two ice blocks too. But uh, yeah, I don't know, this is sort of uninspiring. Divine Spirit is a nice pull, but you're still a ways off getting combo. And he's just gonna continue to slowly clear off these tiny minions. I, I really like this, no fully committing to anything because this is getting scary to the point where so he probably needs to kill it but then again yep. even like what are you afraid of a 3-8? He's dead to full combo at this point. Similar crew to copy a babbling book. I, I think it's the correct play here. It feels bad but... <laughs> <laughs> More random. <laughs> random every turn. Yeah. Pavling scroll. <laughs> Um, Mana Bind doesn't really feel good now that you've seen both, both powered shields, I guess. Um, apologies to the stream about that, one of my friends just linked me a new thing from Fire Emblem here. Oh no, this is gonna take all my money. 
Ooh. Here's Ooh. some fun shenanigans. Frostlitch, do it, Aaron. Do it. I, I think that's actually the correct... Well, wait. Primordial Glyph will discover a spell from Priest. Yes. Wait, it just says discover a spell, not discover a mage spell, right? It does just say discover a spell. Interesting. Ice block from the from the shifting scroll. That's gonna be three blocks. I think you do want I, to play that. Oh yeah, I, I would definitely do that right now. And you even get a nice Medusa fillet. Uh, I guess the fillet doesn't do that much. The the downside of the block is if you're worried that the combo is about to come out. Well, if then... the combo comes out, it's gonna do 32 damage, and he's gonna survive exactly. on 27 HP. <laughs> Block! You totally block here! Alright, he, he's gonna go for the block. So, yeah, what I was saying earlier is, uh, discover a spell. Potentially, Aaron would want to go for the Primordial Glyph there and look for the combo even Excuse sooner. Me. Before, you know, something like a block could come out. We see, um, we see Suweeb just kind of dumping a bunch of <laughs> damage into this Talon Priest, afraid of the combo. Yep. And wait, he didn't block, he played the counter spell. I, yeah, I thought... Hmm. Can't agree with that. Gets instantly countered. Oh, yeah. Instantly countered, and, uh... We're back to square zero, and no more block. No more third block. Hmm. I think, I think Aaron, oh, interesting. That is very interesting. I'm surprised to see that. I guess he really wants to keep the Talon Priest I, alive. And I think Polymorph he's... off the top. Well, I actually think he might be trying to bait Polymorph or something. But why? I, that's what I'm not sure of. Perhaps Aaron saw that he's got the Frost Lich. He's got the new game plan. He's like, ooh, I can take this game to turn 50. This is my style. This is where I <laughs> exceed. I mean, that is true. Uh, Aaron is all about those fatigue games. And Primordial Glyph off that Shifting Scroll is also good, but now he decides he wants the Arcanologist. I don't know what he's hoping to get off the scroll. Yeah. He's just letting it cycle through good spells, and eventually he's going to get like a Shatter or something. I mean, yeah, what What are you looking for? Are you just looking for the perfect out? Confuses me just a little bit. I think we're, I think Suib's thinking, you know, turn 9 Alexstrasza, and I think yeah. Aaron's thinking turn 9 Lich King, or uh, Frost Lich. Oh, so true. So we do finally see the inner fire come for Aaron a little too late. And he has no real play here. Oh wait, it's not even his turn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm totally getting distracted by the new heroes announcement that I'm reading through. <laughs> Trying to figure out how IS is going to get all my money in the next two days. And yeah, I'm also, turn 9 Frost Lich. I'm, I'm wondering what Suiv is holding this mana bind for. Like, what, what are you trying to bait with it? I guess you're trying to pretend it's counterspell a little later on? I don't know. Ooh, Syndragosa <laughs> here. I think um, we see Syndragosa first, and then Alexstrasza as a follow-up. The big issue with Syndragosa is you're giving a free water elemental to Eren. Yeah, but, I mean... I I actually, with the fireball in hand, I like Alexstrasza face. I'm gonna fireball the elemental instead, and... Finally, the mana bind. Sure. I hear PD's getting a little excited um, in the yeah. background. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a snake toy. He likes the snake toy. Makes sense. <laughs> we'll see how bad it gets if I have to leave. Shouldn't be a big issue. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh,. My friends have just gotten used to it in Discord. I got this like really nice mic set up, and then it's just a constant squeaking in the background just to ruin it all. That's great. Yeah, 
Um, it could oh, be what? worse. I. We we have a uh, a radiant elemental with life steal because of the frost lich. And we have a divine spirit for the mage. So uh, yeah, are we now gonna see Alex come out or Meteor? I mean, you just saw the inner fire. You would you would think if if a combo was coming out, you would have known. Yeah. We see we see an arcane missiles now from the shifting scroll. I really think I, I really like think the block. ice block would have been so good. Yeah, three blocks in this matchup is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I suppose Cinder Ghost. Yeah, I was gonna say Cinder Ghost is not terrible here. You can go ahead and ping one off yourself. And ping's the correct one to play around. Uh, Meteor. Meteor. Yeah, whatever that thing is. <laughs> so there's a crazy play here. You divine spirit your frozen champion, so that I can't get pinged. Instead, we're gonna see Master Spell ping. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sick. Is someone injured? This was a pretty ca crazy uh, swing here. Yep, and then he plays he around. Him. Plays around the Zero correctly. Probably. I was gonna say he even could have Potion of Madness there to full clear the board. Ooh, Blizzard's a pretty good Ink Master Solia yeah. works. Hey, when did when did the Solia that was, happen? That was, that oh, was I got, came on Cintragosa. It's active. He can Solia Blizzard. That's that's actually really impressive with 12 cards left in deck. Yeah, that's incredible. I wish I could have emoted there <laughs> for Sweden. That's that's legitimately amazing. Ping off the 1-1, one one and... wow. I think a huge issue here, though, is... Aaron has Suhib's win condition way sooner than Suhib does, which is gonna be, you know... Like, what is he going to do to get back? Yeah. Oh my Oof. god! Wait! <laughs> this, is, this is a nether spike! This is a Draconid operative! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I guess Syndragosa is an available discover because Aaron is now a mage. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he can't even get Duskbreaker or Operative anymore. <laughs> this, this game is... Do you watch the... Uh, damn, I don't remember who that guy is right now. But do you watch the video where it's just a clown fiesta Hearthstone? Uh, like, comic video. Oh, yes, yes, um... Raunchy animation, I think? Yeah, Ron Crunchy, that's Time it. Is this, this is pretty much that. Yeah. In a nutshell. Second Fireball, I really think I would have liked to see the early Alex Straza and then just try to pull that plan. Yep, but instead he's gonna try to grind out the board and make it difficult for Frostlich to get water elementals, but little does he know. <laughs> the icy wind yeah, no, no thoughts about it, just... <laughs> like, Aaron is literally playing Sweep's deck and... <laughs> that's, I don't think that's gonna be played anytime soon. I mean, Hemet is, you know, it's playable in 11 turns. I wish we could send a screenshot back to 2014 and show Brode what he has done. Yep, this is a uh, priest versus mage where, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> uh, the shifting scroll now has mere entity, which would have been sick last turn. Well, even then, you only get an 8-8. Eight, eight. But, I, I love you how still have Alex Straza. That's true. But, Eren still has a Twilight Acolyte. And, Sweep has to ping down the Frozen Champion to deny it to... 
to uh, Aaron. I think Aaron's gonna drop Cthulhu now. <laughs> I want to see Cthulhu <laughs> played. He's, he's not going to Cthulhu. He pulls another Divine Spirit. That's pretty good. He, he still has some yeah. combo potential going on. Does, is he doing it? Is he just going to push 16 damage? I, I think you can just push 8. You've, you've got the... Okay, yeah, you can train too. I was going to say, you've got the control available. Yeah. This, this game is so weird. Oh, Elise is a pretty good draw here. Although... The scroll is now Arcane Intellect. You could Elise Arcane Intellect on Goro Pack. That'd be a pretty good, uh, pretty good turn. I think that's decent. What um, to do? what to but do? I'd, I'd be slightly a... worried if, that this game is going to go to fatigue. But then again, if you don't find your Frost Lich, I don't see how you can win. Sweep decides to play it slow. He's not afraid of the big bad dragon. Ooh. It's oh, 22 damage. Is that feeling more... more appealing? <laughs> nope, we're gonna see Cthid. I, I think you push face, that way you can look for the... Oh. <laughs> not gonna do it. You okay, know, I guess to I guess dominance. to be fair, yeah, to be fair, Aaron's so far ahead on board and with the Frost Lich, I guess he doesn't care. Also, I mean, I think Aaron's used to playing decks where the win condition literally involves never hitting the face. <laughs> so, I'm not sure he understands how to do that. I just I just wait for fatigue. That's that's how you deal face damage. Now that Alexstrasza is looking deader and deader, 2 damage Alexstrasza here, uh, <laughs> Battlecry is much less impressive than, you know, 15. That, yeah, that's that's why I thought it was going to be so good to play it early. And we see the Shifting Scroll just sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> yep, it's a pretty good Twilight Drake. He is playing around Meteor, yeah. I was wondering why, um... Don't do it, Aaron. Don't do uh, it. You saved that Divine Spirit. I was wondering at first why I didn't heal up the Cindracosa, but then I forgot Aaron's a mage now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, he does get Fireball off the scroll now. Is now when you want to commit the scroll? I think... I think he... Well, he's throwing away his other Fireball, though. Like, what other burst does he have? What to do? What to do? Um... Uh, I, I almost think this is just Blizzard and Wait. Potentially, yeah. You really need your own Frost Lich. Frost Lich mirrors get really cool and difficult. Pretty clear signaling that Meteor is in hand. <laughs> yep. Although, yeah, I was going to say, he should see this and be able to mess it up a bit. Another oh, yes, Cindragosa. please, Cindragosa. Anixia gives you a uh, six water water elemental targets, but I think Cindragosa <laughs> is just so good here. I, I would assume if you had time to hero power. Oh, oh wow. he's gonna, he's gonna. Oh. Okay, that's that's pretty sweet. This this gives just a lot of good targets on the board, but the one big thing is Meteor is now really good again. Yeah, but on the other hand, I don't know. I just, I don't understand this game anymore. He is going to go ahead and Meteor. Makes sense. see a Forbidden Flame, which also isn't very impactful. You can I'm kill off the Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> and Cindragosa. I, I just want to, yeah. Just rub salt in the wound. Do it. Do it. Yes! Yes! Ping up. Which one do you ping? The right one, right? Yeah. yeah. Although I think that was both... Yeah, that's both Meteors now, so I don't think it matters. <laughs> Let me see. Cool. I, there's still a Shifting Scroll that can get Meteor. Hungaro <laughs> uh, pack. Least... <laughs> we can get off the pack. 
So Aaron has 16 damage on board now, so Alex Straz is even more dead. Hmm. Um, yep. Potentially he could bluff something with like Alex Straz, the Divine Spirit, to make him think that, like, well, I have to at least freeze this, but he can still pop the block, so. Oh, and Garo Ooh. back pulls another uh, Trailblazer, it. which is just not going to be useful quick enough, but it's cute. So there's a play here. No, no, there isn't. Never mind. Those elementals have life steal. I was gonna say Sabretooth and Pink Face, and uh, puts it in Power Blast lethal range, except it totally doesn't. <laughs> Honestly, though, um, it could be the best chance he has. I, like, I don't know about that. Like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, yes, do it, Aaron. Do it. Do it. You have to do it, Aaron. Make him hate himself. You're literally playing his deck. Do it. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a world in which. Alright, he, he plays it safe. He uses Dustbreaker. Oh, uh, we do see it though. Yes! <laughs> oh, this is so good. This, th you were talking about Tilt. I think this is <laughs> the game that I experienced Tilt. Hey, he does get the Meteor off, <laughs> off Shifting Scroll. I can clear off uh, half this board. <laughs> meteor Ice Block. <laughs> Aaron just messaged me, I have all the best cards in his deck. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it, it's gotta feel bad as Suhi, like, it, you craft Syndragosa just to play an opponent that can just discover two off a common card. <laughs> oh gosh. Plays a Ravisaur run that he can't even adapt. <laughs> Play the cruel. I actually play the Hemet. <laughs> destroy, destroy your Elise pack. Destroy dominance. <laughs> and meanwhile, the shifting scroll still doesn't get played. <laughs> yeah, that it, it really bothers me. Cruel's activated. Oh my god. Too. He can he can discover another frost switch from Dracon. Yes. Yes. You know you want to, Aaron. It does. A Garo pack! <laughs> Just play it! Just play it! <laughs> do it! I don't care. Just do it. Yes! There there've not been nearly enough uh Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there have not been nearly enough emotes in this game for what has occurred. Does another class right now count as another class from mage, another class from priest, or another it, class from rogue? It actually looks at your original class. So, okay. so other class than priest, but yeah, great question there. So, it's the two Syndragosas, the... Do. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Can't handle this. Uh, yeah. Again. And neither can show, Sui. <laughs> the only priest. Oh, there's two priest cards. Well, the Cabal, but the, I believe. Didn't the Cabal come from the pack? No, no, that was in his deck. Okay. In any case, Aaron's, Aaron's uh, hand is now less priest than it is mage, I guess. I, I don't even know what that is. So, Aaron continues his tradition of playing incredibly long games and is now up 2-1. <laughs> I, I think that one was okay, that was very enjoyable to watch. Yep. Oh, deep breaths, Kevin. Deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last deck left is this Jade Druid. Yep. <clears throat> So Jadra definitely has a difficult time against the combo priest because there's a chance that combo just gets off early and kills you. Let's see. But, um, double spreading plague, Malfurion. But yeah, no, no open 
no Oaken Summon boys, whatever those things are. Yeah. Tree Man? Doesn't sound right. <laughs> Tonk thing that doesn't or that <laughs> can't attack. Yeah, that can't, except it can't because Oaken Summons. I must protect the wild. That's basically the only time I ever consider it can attack. Yep. Um, I think as Aaron you keep everything but the dragon. As Jade you keep the ramp, I guess. Yeah, I don't think. Like Ooh, I think that's still a decent hand from Sweeb. Um. There's a chance that Aaron won't think about the spellbreaker and might go hard early. Right. Is someone injured? On Aaron's side, he has a pretty good, pretty good curve. So one thing you can do to bait out spellbreaker is just play a on curve Twilight Drake. This is such a juicy spellbreaker target. I wonder. Oh, okay. You wish to live. And he's gonna coin out the talent priest. Makes sense. I I like that. You can um, you could potentially shadow visions next turn for an inner fire. Exactly. Um, Jade Blossom is fairly obvious here, I would think. Yeah. Sweeps so pretending he has options, or he really doesn't. <laughs> Um, yeah, Shadow Vision seems like the... I guess he's thinking about drawing an extra card instead. But he pulls Shadow Visions from Shadow Vision. He... He snap-picked that, which might really scare Suhib, though. Yes. Ooh, Malfurion is amazing here. And Norish, and then next turn you get Malfurion, and... <laughs> Oof. Aaron just messaged me, rip 30 minute sets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is uh, my other motivation for maybe not hmm. wanting to play Aaron next round is, you know... <laughs> Although, I don't what... know, I, I think those are the most fun. What happens when an unstoppable aggro player meets an immovable uh, <laughs> control player? I'm pretty sure the aggro player always has the smaller attention span. <laughs> that is absolutely true, yes. If a game goes longer than five uh, five minutes or ten turns, my attention tends to wander. It's like how um, if you're below if you're below rank five and you can still get bonus stars, um, it's like somewhat common if you notice you're playing a control deck and it's past turn six, you're better off just conceding and then trying again later. Um, yeah, that is absolutely true. I've uh, done that in the past. Uh, I once went through a phase where if I had a mulligan that was bad, I would just insta-concede and go next. <laughs> I mean, actually, uh, with my current priest deck on ladder, uh, if if the rogue... If I'm playing a rogue and they're Kingsbane rogue, so they play like Cavern Shiny Finder, Kingsbane, right. whatever, uh, I just concede because I'm not winning that game. <laughs> that also makes sense, yeah. So one interesting thing about Malfurion here is... Uh, Aaron can like silence off the taunt and potion of madness and use the little scarabs to do his dirty work for him. So we'll see if Sweep goes for poisonous instead of uh over. I don't think taunt. he did. Now if he goes for taunt, and he doesn't use the spellstone to clear the talent priest either. Uh no master spell here at least, so there's that. Not yet. Not yet. Doesn't draw okay. into it either. Never lucky. Uh, a big Twilight Drake here might bait out the Spellbreaker. I mean, it's not even really bait. Big Twilight Drake <laughs> is real scary. I, w I was gonna say, Aaron now has two potential targets that would be really good for that. Yep. So that's exactly what he's going for. Pass the rest of this. Two UIs is. You never want to see two UIs in hand. I, th I think we'll see Spellbreaker on Twilight Drake. Yeah, I think it has to be that. Twilight Drake is way too scary. Although, Sweep might be thinking about on the North Shire. Okay, I was gonna say, he might be really concerned about draw, but... Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The North Shire is going to get some real good draw value. And or potentially, you know, Potion of Madness and win the game oh, or something. But... What, is this a 6? Oh, it's only 4. Um, I was he gonna can say armor it... up and hit 6. Yeah. 
But if he armors up, he doesn't have the one damage necessary to take out. No, he's gonna armor up and go plus one attack. He's gonna have six on the Arshire and the one damage to kill the oh, Twilight Drake. Yeah, very clever. Very clever. Well, well, well played. So that could actually be a huge swing here. Yep. I think we're likely to see Dustbreaker as a response potentially. Yeah. Okay. But um, I mean, ultimate low infestation or ultimate infestations about to come out. So potentially, he can play. He's got a swipe value here, but I think oh, drawing man. five cards is UI. also. UI. <laughs> UI. He's really considering it, though. UI. How is this? My thoughts are plagued. If you couldn't tell, I used to play Jadrid, and I am also incredibly impatient playing that deck. <laughs> does uh, Sweep run Arcane Tyrants? He does. Yep. Doesn't pull one, though. But that's fine. So, UI is sort of like Doom Guard. It always comes in pairs when you never want it to. <laughs> The scary thing for the druid here is really doesn't matter if you've got 20 health, 40, you know, 70. Yep. <laughs> One good combo is all it takes. Right, and even your taunts can just get, uh, can get, what's that? Spelled. Can get Twilight Acolyte down to 2 health, then, or down to 2 attack, then Potion of Madness, and then used against you. So it looks like he is going to respect the Northshire Cleric draw now, and... Start finally making some green men at yeah, long, I long think last. Seems pretty good. Just double jade spirit here. Get yep. a wide board. Which is going to immediately get Dusk broken, but. Meh. You're just building up green men for later. Interesting. He's. He doesn't want to heal it this time? I guess okay. he wants to play a Twilight Drake. Yeah, Twilight Drake's a lot more pressure here. I can totally I, understand yeah, that. Yeah, especially with the Divine Spirit Crazed Alchemist. Yep. Um, Sweep's on 32 health. Can go up to 35, which... Uh, the Twilight Drake represents 28 damage with combo. So Sweep's now planning uh, armor up Jasper Spellstone Swipe, which can clear the board, potentially. You can even go with the branching pass to draw one and gain six armor. And is so is it a minor misplay to Ooh, he's just gonna oh. gain armor twice. That also makes sense. I was gonna say if you're gonna draw one, shouldn't you draw one first? But if you're just getting armor it doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> I think we're likely to see another spite dragon in here. Uh, yeah. Uh, really a super... Ooh, Temporus, Temporus could be... I think Temporus is absolutely the correct pick here. Jade Druid can't make use of the good, uh, two turns anywhere near as well as the Priest can. Yes, play it now. Play it play now. Play it, play it, play it. Aww. No balls. And sort of mediocre shadow visions too. It doesn't get the inner fire heals. I mean, doesn't get the divine spirit he was hoping for. Yeah. Um. Mm, that's eh. pretty bad. I think you take the spreading plague. That's true. It's a one five. <laughs> it is a one five, and also eight goes pretty wide late game. Um. UI. Yeah, I yeah I think UI here because you're highly likely to find one of your arcane ty tyrants at least. UI to 5-6, yep. Then I think you hit the 1-3. Um, you've seen both North Shires, so it doesn't really matter. No, nope, he's gonna trade. I don't I don't particularly mind it. He wants to keep his armor total nice and high. Cracking it off the top's not bad, but... Oh, man. Uh, Jade Idol? No, no, they're way too slow. You cannot afford yeah. to try to get into Jade Race. Aya's highest value, I guess. I I was gonna say Arcane Tyrant with your Spreading Plague. 
Ah, that's true, actually. That makes sense. I, I really think... I think he needs to get on the Temporis plan. Yeah. You think at this point of the game, um, the Druid is probably now favored? <sighs> it's really hard to say. I think if Aaron can't find another um, Divine Spirit soon, then yes. Especially, I mean, I, like, if I were Sui, I'd be playing that Jade Behemoth. No. I don't playing. have my deck tracker open. Has Aaron already used both Shadow Visions? I know he discovered one off he, one earlier. He has. Yeah, so I mean, that means he's capped at two Divine Spirits. That's... That's not looking good. I wonder if Eren's win condition is actually to bait Suib into playing a sufficiently large uh, Jade Golem, which he can then uh, he can then Twilight Acolyte and Potion of Madness. Because his own minions aren't going to have nearly enough health anymore, even with double Divine Spirit. Yeah, I think Suib should just be playing, you know, like taunts like this and just armor up every turn. So even if you get a ridiculous combo. You know, he's got the second Spellbreaker in hand. Yeah, otherwise, Beast has no way of winning this late game. I don't like going face here. Um, yeah. I think you just keep clearing, keep clearing, keep clearing, and you will eventually win this game. So now Temporis is very bad, because yeah. you just lose. Yep, yeah. Temporis is not so good anymore. Spreading Although we just see spreading hand. value. It's pretty good. And this has got to look like a lot of really scary targets for <laughs> Divine Spirit. Oh yeah, and suddenly it's just a lot of damage on board. He can clear out all three plague, uh, all three scarabs at least, and with swipe he can clear out the tyrant on top of that. I I think I would like to see spreading plague swipe here, just spawn two scarabs and clear out that clear out most My of the board. Yeah, yeah, I like that. There's so many cards in hand. I'm, uh, I'm spectating Aaron on the bottom, and I wish Blizzard had a better client for viewing the top person's cards. A tangled web. Yep, but uh, oh, you're small indie company. Yep, exactly. It's only been like, what, four years since they released this spectator client? Oh. I, I'm not sure I wasn't around for the original launch. Um, I thought original client didn't even have, uh, like, two players spectator. I thought you could only spectate one. That is absolutely correct, yes. So, um, old, comp old tournaments, what, you would have to have two clients spectate the two players and have stitched them together in post-production. So, hold on, should he have stolen a scarab? Oh, well, he knew he was gonna draw that. Okay. It's still not uh, nearly enough damage. It looks really good, but you're looking at 16, which would be 19 damage coming at you. Yep, and... Yeah, Aaron's all okay. in on this plan, it's about to get silenced, and he is about to, well, lose. I guess, though, even silence, that's a 5-6. Which then dies to board. And he's out oh, of resources. Yeah. Yep. I forgot there's still a board left over there. Yeah. I think what Aaron could have done is play Temporis earlier. I think Sweep now is debating which emote to use before spellbreaking. Chooses for <laughs> none. These, uh, these two opponents are way too nice to each other, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen a single astounding or astonishing. Um, see Suib, you see Suib get a little nervous now as he's only at 31 health. <laughs> yep. Well, Aaron has nothing and he knows it. He's gonna bow out gracefully and we're going to game 5. Typical Aaron tradition. <laughs> and we're gonna see Kingsbane against Jadred. I think this is a favorite matchup for Kingsbane. I'm actually... That weapon. I, I was gonna say, I played quite a bit of Jade Druid shortly after KNC release. I can't remember, I feel like you're right there. Just because vanishing the green men is feels bad. <laughs> In fact, yeah, I remember, um, I remember Aaron playing against, uh... 
I remember Aaron playing against Trunks Jade Shaman, and he was like, yeah, so there's the same game plan as playing against uh, Jade Druid, which is make a really big weapon really quickly, and then smash them in face repeatedly while sapping and vanishing taunts. So that is probably going to be exactly what we see here from Aaron. And yeah, I think this is probably a favorite matchup for the Kingsbane Rogue. It just comes down to draws. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron messaged me saying they're taking a two quick two minute break for Sweep. I don't, I don't blame Sweep at all. This is a marathon <laughs> series already. And I am also going to take a very quick toilet break. I'll be right back. All right. I don't have much more to add on these matchups, so I'm just going to sit quietly here. To anyone watching, hello. I guess I should get in chat. Oh wait, but we're on a six minute delay, so it doesn't even matter. So yeah, I, I played a fair amount of Jade Druid at the start of uh, Kobolds and Catacombs release. And I don't remember facing a ton of Kingsbane Rogues, but I do feel like it was an unfavored matchup just because, sure, you can go infinite, but they can go infinite and get really good vanish off. So I guess um, if I was Suhib here, I would probably try to get a wide board early. Um, the Kingsbane, Kingsbane Rogue really excels against, you know, few huge threats and if you can get a wide board of medium threats and hope they don't have an early vanish you can get a huge advantage there oh i have returned um so i just want to point out that this series begun uh over an hour ago <laughs> nice well, while well, Sweeps, Sweeps quick 3-0 earlier tried to get us back on schedule as quickly as possible, um, we are now officially off schedule again. Yeah, I was going to say, we were supposed to start at 8.30 and their match was over, the first match with Sweep was over 8.40, and it's currently 10pm. Yep. So we're at an hour 20, oh, we've still boy. got a game to go. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, Eric... Aaron just said, realistically, if I win, I think I have one more set in me. Yep. Um, I'm currently checking to see what meetings I have tomorrow morning, <laughs> because... Uh, I think the finals, either way, may have to get postponed to I, a later date. I was going to say, because if I lose round one of finals and we do have to go into a second match, like that would probably start around, <laughs> at this point, probably 11.30, maybe midnight. Yep. So I think I think it would be a good goal tonight if we can just get to the finals. Yeah, and um, I mean, if Aaron wins this game, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I could even bring us to the final by then. Well, but then again, you're not playing control, so so the game's probably over sooner one way or another. That's true. If it gets past like turn ten, I'm probably conceding. <laughs> Um. All right, so Sweeps on the develop green men as quickly as possible plan, and Aaron has a really early Kingsbane and some buffs. So yeah, Su Sweeps, his his opening hand looks rough compared to Aaron's here. Yeah, he I, like I think all I think he can just he yeah, he can just wait here. Um. Yep, and he yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks throwing a shiny finder into a 1-1 just to die, or even a hero power with what yeah, we see. Check this out, Aaron top decks Kingsbane, and then it just wins the game. Ah, not quite. Uh, not quite. But Vanish is a really good card to have here. No shiny. Do you coin so out the Kingsbane to clear out the 1-1 so that he's forced to hero power your shiny finder? He chooses not mm. to do so. Let's see, what's he running for draw? Um, Aaron? He's running Cold Lights. Just, okay, Minstrels and Cold Lights, yeah. Yep. I have seen uh, a couple of variants of this go for the Sprint, which is interesting. Right, yeah. 
He does also have one Phantom Knives, but I barely count that as card draw. Yeah, that that's just your Murloc <laughs> plan, I guess. So, how how greedy do you want to be with Valera? Like, do you play Kingsbane double poison now, or do you sort of try to hold out to get double poison, like double double poison value out of Valera to Hollow? I'm I'm gonna say Aaron has more experience here than I do. I, I didn't even consider that line of thought. I was all about double deadly, let's go face, but this, <laughs> especially against a Jade Druid, I guess you have to get a little more value. Yeah, this this makes sense. He's gonna drop the squid face on curve next turn. While Druid just continues to ramp up and do Druid things. Yeah, I, I think the Mire Keeper is a really good pickup here because then you don't have an awkward five. Yep. I think we might see Squidface coin Deadly Poison just to try to preserve the 4-4 four four a little bit. But Squidface is almost definitely going to get silenced here too, right? Probably, but even then, um, just having a 4-4 four four to push damage may be good right now. Yeah, I can see that. So Aaron does go with the Deadly Poison Squidface line of play. Makes sense. Like yeah, Aaron has a single Doomsayer, which I guess that's the only thing you would hold uh, silence for, but I mean, yeah. there's, there's nothing else in here that you can even silence, I think. And uh, yeah, Spellbreaker's gonna Your come down. It goes pretty good, I think. And the Spellstone's also gonna get up uh, upgraded for a future turn. Yeah, he'll probably use that to clear the squid face next turn. That's a pretty... Do you shadow step the squid face? I was thinking that. You know, honestly, um... The other obvious shadow step target would be Code Light. I, I think, yeah, I think he doesn't want to uh, shadow step just because it's pushing damage right now. But with yeah. the Spellstone, I think this is a pretty good Behemoth Spellstone turn. Yeah, that's going to be Nourish, Spellstone, Tyrant, which seems really balanced. Do you draw with the Nourish here? No, he's going to ramp. <clears throat> I guess, yeah, I guess it's okay to ramp here. Yeah, since especially with a second it. Nourish. Compared to Ultimate Infestation, it seems like such a terrible card, though. That's true. You're only drawing three cards. Where's the damage? Where's the two more cards? Oh, Minstrel shows up, but it's sort of a meh Minstrel. It's gonna pop the second poison, it looks like, just to get the combo off. Yeah, I, I think that's a good call. Fix Doomsayer, which is sort of irrelevant here, and another Minstrel. We might see Doomsayer to pop the next Minstrel's co uh, combo. I was gonna say, that may not be terrible, um, because you're, you're rolling into UI turn. So yeah. to at least, you know, stop that is really good. So, Although actually, Sweep can just go off with Jades. Yeah, Behemoth Spirit seems pretty good here. And there's no real response from Aaron. Like, what you you vanish and then it just gets played again with bigger Jades. What to do? Yep, sounds about right. Yeah, I think... Vanish is mostly to clear taunts. I think we'll probably see Doomsayer to get combo for Elven Minstrel. Yeah, that makes sense. Although... How much damage is he Aaron, staring down? Aaron's at 14. Yep, he's looking at 5, 10 damage on board. He's dead to swipe, he's dead to UI. Which, uh... Let's see, there's a 20% chance. Um, I don't have deck tracker for that. I don't have deck tracker for probabilities. Probability is pretty high though that you would just um, lose four, here. Four out, of, four out of 20 chance he draws it, and then there's still a chance that he has it in hand too. And Norris draws three more cards for swipes, and yeah. I'd say that's like 30%. He has to go for the vanish. Feels bad, man. So that actually changes things quite a bit. I didn't see how low Aaron was getting. Yep, and these things are just gonna come back down. It's gonna be really bad. Aaron might have to commit the second Vanish right now. Although, Vanish Doomsayer is okay at least. Yep. 
but you would much rather have it in a different situation. You would much rather be using these vanishes to push damage when you have like a leeching uh, King's Bane and stuff. Yeah. At least these Jade Golems are sort of dead cards in Zub's hand. You just I feel like you dump three Jade Golems here. Oh, um, yeah. Or silence the Doomsayer. The, the only other good silence target. <laughs> I mean, this has to be Valera, right? There's just... It, yeah, it has to be. Um... You can shadows. Wait. What can you do here? You're looking at lethal on board. Um, Kingsbane leeching poison? You have to. Um, I guess Kingsbane, another cold bite. Yep. My hand is too full. But, okay, sap, sap's good. Yeah, you, you sap the 6-6 six, six here. Two mana assassinate. Yep. Leeching and just fill up a little bit. Makes sense. Okay, so next turn maybe this is the turning point. Yeah. What do you think we see come down from the other side? Just more, more jades, right? I just more green men. I think you've seen both banishes now. So, um, basically, Aaron has to look to get some insane play, such as a blade flurry. But even then, I don't think Blade Fury is enough damage. Nope, it's looking really awkward. And this is a terrifying reward. Oh, that prep is pretty big. So this turn you Valera and use the Code Light to clear off the Behemoth. Then next turn you can do like two Corsairs prep flurry or something. Yeah, maybe there's a chance, but more and more green men are coming out. Yep. Plus, we now see uh, Malfury and the Pestilence. Yep. I mean, I agree that this is looking really grim for Aaron, but... I've seen dirtier wins before. So, it looks like Pestilence is going to happen. Get some taunts. And what else is really unfortunate here is this this is his last uh this is his last proc so he can't swing in and blade flurry. Yep, so no heals from this one. And even two buffs on the even two buffs on the King's Bane isn't gonna be enough in clear to 8-8. Eight eight. However, um prep blade flurry and then do you wait. If you do both, do you have enough to draw and swing? You don't. No. Oh, he's well, not. If Wait, he's is dead. he dead? He is dead, yeah. He's totally dead. Sweep oh. doesn't seem to be looking for the lethal, though. Nope, no. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep, there it is. He's there. Um. Well, well played to both players. Gonna yeah. be a fourth place finish for Aaron, and for the sake of my sleep, I think I'm probably okay with this. <laughs> yeah, really unfortunate for Aaron there that he wasn't able to find, um, wasn't able to, or I guess not find, but he had to use the vanish this so early. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate for him, but it's just the way Hearthstone goes sometimes. All right. Um, I will get off of casting now. That way we can just hear your side of things. Yep. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Later. See you Later. in the finals, maybe. Maybe. I'm. Um. I'm not sure whether or not I want to win. I value my <laughs> sleep. But. Oh. Uh. Yeah. I don't know which group I posted in, but we'll play the the finals. Um. Tomorrow, probably. Okay.